Hello and welcome back. It's been a couple of weeks since the last video and that's because I have been quite busy with teaching and other stuff. Um, but now I wanted to get this video made and uh, it's about, well, these circuit boards which I ordered from China and which arrived at the end of April, I think it was. And uh, in the same package, these boards arrived and I already made a video explaining to you what this project was, the Berlin clock and how it worked and we put it together and got something to the display. But, uh, well, now I have these tons of these Pentagon circuit boards. And uh, what are they for? They will be equipped with a NeoPixel LED in the middle and a blocking or a bypassing capacitor here on the edge. And uh, well, if you don't know anything about NeoPixels, I will recommend you to have a look, for example, at the NeoPixel Überguide by Adafruit, display or explaining about everything there is about these small interesting devices. If we look into a NeoPixel, what we can see is, um, well, first it is a kind of LED. Um, we have a silicon chip here and we have these bond wires going between the different uh, connections. We have four external connections and then we have three individual LEDs mounted here. Can have a closer look on these LEDs. They look like this here. Um, this is one of the LEDs uh, with ha which has both of the contacts on top. It's either a blue or a green gallium nitride based LED. And we have uh, another one which looks like this, almost identical. This is also a blue or a green one. So one of them is blue, one of them is green. And in the middle of the original chip, we have another LED here, and that is a red LED. So we have the three base colors of our color vision system. We have red, green, and blue. And what the chip does is it takes in a digital control signal and controls the brightness of the three LEDs which we can see here by means of PWM modulation so that we actually can control each of the intensities of these three LEDs in steps from 0 to 255, one byte. And uh, so there are four connections to the outside world. And why is that? Well, we have supply voltage for the whole thing, which is most probably, I should guess, this here and this pad over here. And then we have one connection for incoming data and one for outgoing data, because these chips can be connected in long sequences. And one example I have here, you can buy them on rolls of tapes like this, where you have well, lots of them and they are all connected together, but we can send control signals to the individual LEDs, turning on each individual LED by itself. So it's not like a typical RGB uh, band where all the uh, LEDs are connected parallel and you can turn on all the red ones or all the blue ones or all the green ones and combine them. But here you can control actually each individual LED. So what is it for now? What am I planning to do? And uh, well, why are these boards pentagons? So what can we do with a pentagon board like this? We cannot tile 
a surface with pentagons. Um, that's proven to be impossible. Um, you would need something which is called a Penrose tie link in order to fill the surface completely with these patterns. Hexagons would work, but pentagons don't. But we can do something else with pentagons, and that is a dodecator, which means a three-dimensional object with 12 sides. And uh, when I was visiting my father for Christmas last year in uh, the town of Stralsund, there were these stars put up everywhere. These are 3D sculptures, about or real three-dimensional sculptures, about three or four meters high. And in the inside, you see on each of the spikes, you have a a lamp, a powerful lamp. It's actually an RGB LED lamp. And uh, during the night, they would illuminate in different colors and they would project different patterns uh, onto these spikes. And it looked quite nice. And I wanted to make something like this, but on a smaller scale. So I got the idea that I can actually replace these powerful, I don't know how many watts LEDs here, with just one NeoPixel on each of these 12 faces, and then 3D print these spikes. I made a first prototype, I could say. So what is the size of these spikes? They are about seven centimeters long, or for you inchy guys, somewhere between two and a half and three inches. And in the inside, I have here at each corner um, a small NeoPixel. It's invisible for the human eye because it's not so transparent, um, but we will see how it lights up later. But this is hand wired, so I had to connect three, four wires to each of the LEDs on the inside. So there's a rat's nest of wires actually hidden in the center of this sculpture. And then I got the three starting wires for the power supply voltage, so zero volts and five volts, and the data signal, the blue wire here, out to one of the spikes. But in order to actually make two or three of these, I thought this was an impossible process to repeat it. So what I did instead was I thought about how I could make small circuit boards so that I can get a serious connection through the whole structure. So here is my hand, well, hand annotated. I, I drew the uh, actual pentagons on the computer, printed them out, but then I tried to annotate and come up with a connection scheme um, for the individual boards. I then designed the boards in KiCad and it's actually not a very complicated design. Um, I haven't opened KiCad yet, so I will see if I start KiCad later and we have a look at the design. But what you can see is that I have on each of the five sides, I have these five contacts. They're castellated contacts, so this it's actually normal um, through hole component holes which are through plated in the production process and then the individual boards are cut through the middle of these contacts so that you can actually solder these to the next board. So each of these repeated blocks here is one of the edges of the circuit board uh, with its castellated five connections here. The outer two are ground, then comes two times VDD and the middle pin is our data pin. And depending on the uh, setting of these two solder jumpers, the either the D in pin or the D out pin is connected to the middle pin of this jumper. And if I, oops, if I zoom in onto the LED instead, so this is the block symbol for the NeoPixel LED. 
uh, WS2812B is the standard type, whether it is actually that or something compatible, I don't know. And uh, here we have the 100 nanofarad uh, decoupling capacitor between VDD and ground. And here we have the LED chip itself with its uh, supply voltage, data in and data out, and the ground connection VSS here. So I repeated the block here five times. So I have the five edges on the pentagon. And then we can have a look at the circuit board itself here. So it's 20. 7.5 millimeters it, it's actually from the outer edge here so it's not exactly the measurement but point to point here is 27.507 millimeters um, here you see the jumper connections the middle pin these are actually just a standard I use just a standard five pin pin header as a uh, template here which then is sitting on the yellow line which is the cut line for the circuit boards themselves so the, you see the cut line goes halfway through the pins exposing one half of this uh, through hole connection pad here is the place for the capacitor and here in the middle we have the four connection pins of our led we can have a look at the 3D view as well, but I mean, you have already seen the real circuit board in 3D. So in the 3D view, it shows the full pins, but you see that the edge of the circuit boards cuts halfway through these and that opens then these castellation points. Um, oops. Uh, so this is the front side. And as, I, as you have seen on the circuit boards themselves, I have had to put some connections here onto the backside for the routing. Um, I, I used a ground fill on both the front and the back. There's not much current going, there's not really high frequencies involved, so the layout is quite simple of a board like this. And we have only two components of e on each of these boards. So I bought these LEDs, loose SMD version of the NeoPixels, and they also come in these stripes here. And let me take out one to show you. I had tweezers here somewhere. Here I have tweezers. So here we can clearly see the control chip and we see the dark spot, which is actually the red LED and uh, then somewhere else the blue and the green LED are hiding. It's a 5x5 millimeter large uh, package and we have the connections on the bottom mostly. So it would go actually onto the board like this. And then we would need a 100 nanofarad bypass capacitor, which I had also taken out but can't find right now. Um, oh, here they are. So these are 0805 capacitors, ceramic multi layer capacitors. And uh, well, then I prepared something. It's like a cooking show here. Zip. And so these, this is how these look after the capacitors and the LEDs have been soldered. I've been uh, trying uh, different types of soldering here. I've tried it on a hot plate and I've tried it with a soldering iron. I found in the end that the soldering iron was still the best way to do it. So now I need to solder them together into a dodecahedron. Uh, so I need to put them somewhere, somehow together in this three-dimensional shape and solder them together. And I thought, well, how can I do this so that it's, it will not be messy? And for that I made a template, a 3D printed template. I designed it in SK, OpenSCAD. 
and uh, it actually exactly fits our circuit boards here. So I can put the six circuit boards which I need for a half dome like this. The sixth one, sixth one goes on the top and then they stay there and I can solder them together. And let me do that now. So I will solder them a bit and let, let me see. This one looks nice. There was one which didn't look completely perfect and I'm not 100% sure if there was a soldering botch on it because solder paste sticking out under the capacitor and I think that's this one here I put it to the side so still these are these are enough boards here it's six boards so let's put them onto our carousel here like this this no. let's keep it in this order like this and then the top one goes here and now we need some solder wire and a soldering iron Okay, and let's start by actually attaching the middle pins here together of these two. And we have increasing stability in the whole thing. A connection I don't know now there is a definite connection connection so let's take the front here heating up those pads then I'm adding this solder wire quick visual inspection tells me there are connections many solder joints are these there are five times five on the top here that's 25 solder joints and then it's another well it's five boards around and uh, five of the connections on each of them so it's another 25 so it's 50 solder joints which I have to fix here This is, I, you, you will see that I have prepared something in a second, but I haven't really tried it out yet. So I don't know if everything will work. Here I forgot the upper row. Thought I had done all of them. Hadn't. Let's see here, and here. Here and here, come on, like this, Martin, like this, then we have this here, like this. I haven't bothered to clean the boards themselves yet either because I knew that I would add more solder and more flux residue will automatically be there so I will if I'm going to clean the boards I will do it after I'm done with all the soldering 
I'm not even sure if I'm going to clean it. Both the flux I used for the SMD mounting and the flux which is inside of the solder wire is so called no clean flux which actually doesn't need any cleaning necessarily. It's just a quick cosmetic inspection here. Well, let's do it on camera because there I have more magnification. This looks nice. This looks okay. Are there connections there? I'm not completely sure. Yeah, I'm sure. And that's all of them. So that was one half of the dodicator hollow on the inside. Essentially later for, for future models I could think of putting the circuit inside here instead of having it externally. I'm not sure about that yet. Um, but at least I have plenty of these boards to make more of these constructions later. And uh, now for the second half, here it is. It was a bit faster. Um, so I have sold at this already a couple of weeks ago um, when I still had time, but then I never had time to record the corresponding video. So now the idea is to put these two halves together and make one whole ball. Um, you could think of doing other things with a dodica eater with LEDs on its corners. Um, like a rolling dice or something like that. I put. I plan to put uh, everything somewhere so that it's accessible um, for public use. But that will be an upcoming project to do that. So let's solder these halves together here. First connection done. Let's do one on the other side here. There should be some kind of visibility again. You can see they don't like this, but as long as they don't be off, they should be off. And then there's all the other side here. Okay, that's it. 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 Okay, that's it.
and let's see um, all grounds anywhere on this construction should essentially be connected and Sounds good. Um, so let's decide on a starting point here. And I have actually not made up my mind or didn't even think about how do I know where the starting point is and when I decide everything. Okay, let's mark this one here in green. This, this is number number one. And uh, so then, data has to go. And here now my diagram of this sneaky, snaky trail comes in handy. So if I say that this is number one here, then I have to go around and jump over to the other hemisphere. And uh, then I can either continue in the same direction or go as indicated here in this direction around. And instead of this one here, which is wrong, then I would have to go into the middle here. It's mark it with a solder iron like this. So I think I will follow this somehow, which means I will have to decide on one of the sides here to actually leave and that means I have to set a solder bump on this outgoing jumper here. Yeah, there it is. So it goes from here to this one and now I want to rotate clockwise around this hemisphere so that means it has it goes in here which i have to mark here as well it comes in through this pin combination and then it leaves here and comes in here it leaves here comes in here a bit pointy so we have come here we leave this section over here and we come into this section from here we leave this section over here this and we get into this section from here this and uh, so now we have one, one, two, three, four, five on this hemisphere here, and now we have to leave this hemisphere because it's already connected. So we will go down and exit over here. Which means we enter over here. And now we have this hemisphere here. So we're coming in here, so we continue here, which means we leave over here. Enter here. We leave over here. Enter over here. My first idea was to make a universal circuit board which would meet these numbers, and now I just want to make a universal circuit board on the whole way. Also, okay, it obviously needs a little more information to do this job. So, information here, please, information. Information, information. So, I came down here, I enter here, I have to exit here. Now, going around to the goal doesn't really help either, obviously. I exit here and enter this side, then I exit here. So I would say that if I can make a layout where these two numbers would not necessary, where I have one type of circuit board, it would connect in the direction, serious connection, serious but uh, I could be already with it, so I decided on this method to put it all together first, and then by using these jumpers, define the trace. So we have, here's our starting point. Um, starting point over here, goes down here, goes around here, exits here. And now we are on the other hemisphere. We are exiting, entering, exiting, entering, exiting, entering, exiting, entering. And here, this one is already connected. So from this one here, we have to go to the other pole of our construction. We have to change layer again like this and we are coming in here like this and now I think that should be it 
So now I need to get the data in uh, and supply voltage in onto this side here. And for that I actually decided for today to just make a quick connection possible to solder these breadboard jumper wires onto it. So what I will need is a ground connection to any of the ground connections here. Let's solder it like this. Does it work without additional solder? Ah, uh, yeah. on here and attach this one here. No, of course not. That would be a nice short circuit. This one here is the positive supply. Of course, come on, like this. And now I have to connect to a data pin, an incoming data pin and uh, that would mean I have to connect to uh, this jumper here. Since there's uh, nothing soldered here, I can actually solder it either to the pad or here to the castellated connection. Um, if I use a castellated connection, then I have to set the jumper bridge though. that we have an incoming signal to this LED from the middle pin on the castellation. Like this. So, um, hmm. could that be it? Today, in order to just have a quick test, I think we can do it like this. Let, let's start with a fresh project um, for Oops. For everyone who hasn't seen any of my previous videos on the platform I.O. platform, let's make this window small enough to fit on the, completely on the screen here. Um, here we are. Now you see the bottom row here as well. And you still cut off on this edge here. So this is Visual Studio Code. Um, as you can see up there, we will not need the upper menus so much. So I, we, I will leave it like this. Um, we don't need this one here too much either. Let me move this window over here. And so Platform I.O is a plugin or an extension to Visual Studio Code, which allows you to write Arduino or other microcontroller code. Um, we will today start with a new project here. And here we are, project name 2022-06-11, today's date 11, and I call it new pixel test. Why not? Can we come up with something better than that? What board do we have? We have a Nano and we have a Nano with the old bootloader. We want to use the Arduino framework. Um, so we do this and we say finish. So this is another than this one here. I will just quickly remove this folder from the workspace. So this is our workspace here now. Um, we don't have to change anything in the uh, environment. Everything is standard and is okay. Um, what I will do is I go directly, oh, well, thank you. I go back to here. I want to have the FastLED library included. So FastLED is one of the ready-made Arduino libraries for NeoPixels and uh, yeah. This is this library here. As you can see, there's there's other libraries which obviously are triggered by the same uh, 
search term NeoPixel bus I have used in the past as well. It's a very efficient way to control the NeoPixels, but for me and here today Fastlight is good enough. So we add it to our project, we select the project and this is our current project. And uh, we say add And uh, this I've seen earlier today, it now gives me a warning. This command is deprecated and will be removed in the next releases. Please use Pio package install instead. Um, well, I, I hope that the integration into Visual Studio Code will actually take or acknowledge this and change it correctly correspondingly. Um, other things have been broken with the latest update of Visual Studio Code when it comes to Python programming. I'm a bit disappointed by this, but uh, well, it will work for today. And so what we need now is our source code here. We have our program code here and uh, well, I'll just for, for starting, I will pick a library example code. Um, which one did I choose before? RGB set demo. This one here. We take this and copy the code here directly out of the description window. Control C into main PPP. We have to leave the include arduino.h up here, but we can replace everything else with this example code. So this is now how it looks. First row include arduino.h, then include fastlet.h, which actually resides here under .pio build libdeps fastlet. There is the library, has the library been installed for us. Um, so we have a certain number of LEDs. Um, we only have 12 LEDs. So let's enter 12 here. And uh, we have also to tell it what pin the LEDs. So this is a bit badly documented here, but uh, let if offset numlets. Yeah, so this tells it that it's NeoPixels and the data pin is D2. And uh, if we look at what I've prepared here, the orange wire here goes from a D2 to the to over here where I plan to connect the wires from the ball. And then we have ground and VCC coming here as well. So these will be the connections. D2 is our data pin. So going back here. Um, then there is, it, it does something and it somehow animates the LEDs. Let's just see how this works and if everything is okay. Um, so in order to do so, I will connect the ball here to ground and VCC and the data pin. And the uh, power is still here, which means I didn't build any short circuit, uh, which is obviously positive. And uh, now let me compile the code by pressing here on the check mark. And we see down here in the window how the code is compiled. It has been compiled and uh, it gives us whoops, some information. 6.9% of the data memory of our 80 mega on the Nano is used and 12.8% of the flash memory. Good. And now I should be able to upload the code. COM20. And code is upload. Oh, wow, I see something. I see, I see LEDs flashing and lighting and all of them are on. 
and there's some color transition. Now everything is blue, now it shifts to purple, now to red. Um, the backside is already getting green here. Um, doesn't really show up perfectly on the camera. Perhaps if I close the aperture a bit, nice star pattern. Um, could, could be something from Star Wars or Star Trek, a Borg Dodecaeda or something like this. I don't know. Um, so wh where are the spikes now? Um, in order to get to something which resembles what I showed you in the beginning on the picture or this here, we need these spikes. And uh, well, here they are. I printed them on on uh, uh, my standard Van Howe 3D printer using a transparent PLA of unknown origin. I don't know where I purchased this transparent, uh, clear, colorless PLA. Um, I know here in Sweden that Klaus Olson has a version of it, which is also quite nice, but this is not the class old zone version. I have no idea where it comes from. It is much more transparent than the one which I had previously from class old zone. Here you see the comparison. Um, it's not the exact same file which I printed here, but uh, it's, it's a significant difference. So it's printed in vase mode or spiralized outer contour. And this means there's just one outer parameter. And uh, well, the idea is to have these then mounted glued onto the faces. I printed an opening here in the bottom so that it fits nicely over the circuit board. And uh, once everything is done, uh, I will glue. This one is bigger in the base. Oh, these are all bigger. This is too small. So this this is how the, the standard one. And the uh, glue gun is almost there. Ah. I think so I will put some glue on the five corners. Quite stringy. And all these wool strings in between. They, they will also be light spreading them. One, two, three, four, five. Is, uh, uh, what you have will, what you will have noticed by now yeah I didn't clean the circuit boards so the flux is still under there and there's no way back now with the glued on spikes One, two, 
didn't want to didn't want to solder or to, to glue it there because that's one of the ones which are my connection points here it's a rather sticky glue like a sea urchin or, or a porcupine or something like that. I wonder a bit about the actual code and, and the actual pattern because one of these spikes is always a bit off with regard to the others um, but that must be the code I have I would not have any explanation how or why. Uh, how or why the wiring would be affecting this. Like this. So here it is an almost 12 pointed star with NeoPixel LEDs. I made some changes, or actually I edited complete new code to just make it more clear that we really can control each individual LED in this new pixel chain. We are still using fastlet.h here. We have 12 LEDs. We um, create the global structure for the uh, array of LEDs. We initialize the array with the number of LEDs, the type as a NeoPixel, standard NeoPixel, and on connected to pin 2 on the Arduino. And in the loop I have a step variable as a static variable, so it will be kept when we leave the loop. Then I have the loop through all the 12 LEDs from 0 to 11, and then depending on the current LED number and the step number modulo 5. I have defined five different colors here red, blue, green, yellow and purple and so each of the LEDs will get a different index from this list and then it will repeat after five LEDs and will run over and uh, then when we are done with setting all these five uh, the 12 LEDs um, I will increase step so that we start over with a new value for step on the next iteration and then we have a one second delay between iterations and uh, well this is how this looks you can see that some of the LEDs always have the same color because we have five different colors and on 12 faces of the dodecahedron they repeat something like two and a half times so we have two and a half leds which always have the same color um, it's for example these three which always have the same color these two have always the same color these two have the same color and the two down here have always the same color what about our two without a spike um, they have different colors so they follow this one follows the same pattern as this one here and this one follows the same pattern as this one here of course I could have defined 12 different colors then we would have a pattern which runs over 12 individual values I think there should be 12 colors in the library I don't know should we check? Let's check how many colors there are in the library and if we can make 12 individual ones. Um, case 5 colon let's i equals c rgb colon colon 
here's some kind of aquamarine, amethyst, azure, beige, bisque, black, blanched almond. I don't know. Let's give it an aquamarine here. Let's uh, and we have it. We have a break afterwards and a semicolon. Copy this number six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now we five, six. Well, obviously, we must have a white. Let's take seven, will be, I don't know, what do we have? Colon, colon. Yellow, I already have. Weed, violet, the coast tomato. Let's give it a tomato. Um, number eight. I saw a teal in the list. Number nine. What else? A brown, blue, blue, violet, cadet blue, chartreuse, chocolate, coral, cornflower blue, cornflower blue. I don't know. Let's try cornflower blue. Um, number 10. Some yellowish color again. What, what could that be? Beige, perhaps? And then finally 11 let's black out one of the leds as well so and then of course we have to do a percent 12 here and here as well and let's see compiling and uploading i transition you to star oh yeah I can see where the black ones are turning around but yes individual colors on all the 12 spikes of this star and with this, see you next time.